you know, we mentioned already the Irishman, which uh, seems like Netflix's obvious push for the 2020 Oscars. Uh, Scorsese probably getting a director nom, uh, you know, possibly a Best Picture nomination. Uh, I have a feeling there's going to be a heavy push for that. What? Why don't we talk about some of the other movies that we're looking forward to in 2020 that we think will grab some Oscars buzz, potentially get Best Picture nominations. Um, here, I'll start off, get an obvious one out of the way. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Tarantino, uh, already been nominated three times for Best Picture. He's won, I think, Best uh, Adapted Screenplay and Original Screenplay in the past, if I'm right. Yep, no director. And, yeah, no director. Um, this is a movie that has uh, you know, DiCaprio, Brad Pitt, Pacino, Marco Robbie, Kurt Russell, and it's about Hollywood, um, you know, in like the 1960s, 1970s. I, I have a feeling this is going to get a nomination. Um, I would be very surprised if it at least isn't in heavy discussion by the end of the year. Yeah, I agree. That That's an obvious one. That's also one of the anticipated movies of the year, like many people. Um, it's yeah. very exciting because we, I mean, we only have a trailer yet. We just had those, those, those teaser images and it's like, yeah. It looks awesome. It's a, it's, a, it's a cool premise. So I'm very excited for that. Um, and you got the Irishman, Scorsese, another obvious mm -hmm. high profile thing, the connection to Netflix, notwithstanding. Um, I mean, you think you just think about like Oscar movie has a lot of different connotations. One of the tried and true ones is historical biopic. Mm -hmm. Sometimes those movies don't get all the way, like recently on the basis of sex, an enjoyable film that didn't quite get over the top, wasn't quite that special uh, to be get Oscar nominated. Other times you have very artsy movies that have a actor who time has come and they get over the, they get, they get close. Even if the movie is probably just good, not great. Something like dark Sour last year with Gary Oldman. Mm -hmm. uh, this year we have Harriet with Cynthia Revo yep. playing Harriet Tubman. Of course, that's an obvious one. Um, also, I'm not sure about this one. This is coming out a little sooner, but, Tolkien, Nicholas Holtz playing J.R. Tolkien. Lily Collins is in there as his eventual wife. I'm curious to see how that one does. And there's a bunch of other ones that I don't, I don't even think we we quite know about, like, you know, if they're going to come this year and stuff. But those kind of movies always come out. So I, they're kind of easy to bank on as one of the one, one type of historical biopic, historical event movie will be around. Another one being thrown out is at Sundance was The Report, Adam Driver, and Annette Benning. Uh, about 9-11 and I also could see that being maybe they can't quite push it all the way but maybe they focus on Annette Benning trying to get her an Oscar she's been close the past few years 20th century women film stars are dying at Liverpool she's been trying to really <laughs> break through and people Man. really like she's playing Diane Feinstein in this so it's a historical character so I think yeah. that that's one to watch get Adam Driver his Oscar for real I mean you we're going to talk about it in a little bit, I'm sure, but he has a chance to possibly be nominated for as Kylo Ren. If if Star Wars gets nominated for Best Picture, which I don't know if, if I think it will happen, but um, there's been a lot of buzz about the possibility of it. And I think if 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 it does get nominated or if it's at least in the discussion, he might have a heavy chance of getting nominated for that. But get Adam Driver his Oscar already. He's one of the best working actors right, right. now. Yeah, I think episode nine and whatever, obviously, whatever it ends up being called, mm -hmm. uh, the obvious comp is Lord of the Rings Return of the King, which right. won, like, was it 13 Oscars, including Best Picture? <laughs> um, it's a similar idea. If the movie's critically acclaimed at the end of the year, that conversation will happen and Driver will be part of it. I mean, we just saw Black Panther get nominated. That was definitely more recognition of the cultural event. I don't know if Star Wars quite will be able to make that kind of. Uh, you know, impact, impact like that, yeah. but uh, it probably make slightly less money as well uh, domestically, anyway. But that that'll happen. And in terms of like blockbusters, I don't know if there's anything else. Like, I mean, A Star Is Born made a lot of money. Pee and Rhapsody came out of nowhere, made a lot of money, and got Oscar attention. Um, is Rocket Man, Taron Egerton's Elton John movie, coming out in a few months? Is that gonna get there if the uh, movie is good i mean there's a chance the movie's better than Bohemian rhapsody frankly it won't take that much to get that far <laughs> and if the movie becomes another big hit mm -hmm. and we can talk about how Egerton also sang in it unlike rami i think i mean it, this narrative has been beat to death but it's also very easy to see so mm -hmm. i think this is one that that's one thing that 
big money movie that actually could be at the end, like episode nine. Um, otherwise, like, I, I don't know. I, I don't think the Lion King, even though I think that movie is a chance to be the highest grossing movie ever. I don't think that'll really get anywhere beyond the animated categories. Um, other than that, I mean, I don't what know how much Endgame? we expect from us, Jordan Peele, how much money that'll make to get out made a lot of money. Obviously, yeah. we, we expect us two weeks. We'll find out how good it is soon. Um, that'll be in the conversation, I think. But yeah, I, I don't know how many other big movies really have a chance. What do you think about Endgame? Uh, I, I don't see it really getting there, but it's, yeah, it, it, it's in the discussion. I mean, here's the thing. It's like... It's going to be like five hours long, dude. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I, I just... I mean, what, what are they honoring? I mean, a lot of people would be like, we, we don't need to recognize the 10-year Marvel run they get recognized by the box office chart every year. You know, we, they, I mean, Black Panther got recognized not for being a Marvel movie, but for being a culturally uh, milestone movie, yeah. you know, what, what, what is, what is the real recognition of Endgame? you know, besides being a movie, a lot of people really want to see. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not sure if it gets there because it's not going to be as critically adored as episode nine would be. If episode nine was very good, you know? Right. So I, I don't know. I think the argument for Endgame would be well, probably the, the similar to um, Avengers this year, like the technical piece of it. And but I think also it, it you know the ten year build up to this, it took so much planning and writing and interweaving of stories. I think that there is an argument to be made that you know if this if they do land land the ship and this does capture some critical acclaim, that you can make the argument that what they did is way more impressive than like the first trilogy of star Wars, um, even Lord of the Rings. Cause they basically took these, uh, what eight, nine characters and somehow interweaved all their stories together in a way that somehow made sense and honors all these other movies and these characters each get their piece of the pie. It's pretty impressive. It would need to like win the producers guild award or something to get recognized for, I think for as like that being the narrative for it. But yeah, I don't, uh, I don't yeah, see it personally, see it. but it's possible. Um, a couple that I think are shoo-ins to get a, uh, Oscar buzz, possibly nominations. I mean, us, you mentioned, I think that one will definitely be in the discussion. Uh, Little Women, we've met, we talked about it quite a bit here. You got Greta Gerwig, her follow-up film, uh, Saoirse Ronan, Emma Watson, Chalamet, Meryl Streep, um, Florence uh, Pugh, Eliza yeah. Scanlon from Sharp Objects, Laura Dern. I don't, it's I don't see how this one misses. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think also one of the things that people come back to is uh, the directors are usually men. And Greta Gerwig got nominated as a female director her first time around. As long as this thing is uh, even, I think, half of what we expect it to be. And I have a feeling it will meet all expectations, if not exceeds. Um, she'll be up there. And I think the movie will as well. Uh, one movie that I wasn't really on my radar, but it sounds really intriguing is Ford versus Ferrari. Hell yeah, bro. Uh, <laughs> James Mangold uh, obviously did Logan. Um, he's at the helm here. He's, and it's talking about the two car companies battling to see which company can get their car to win the Lay Mans back in 1966. Mm -hmm. You got Christian Bell and Matt Damon. <laughs> I mean, talk about throwing all the recipes in the pot and coming up with an Oscar worthy soup. Like that's got to be it. Yeah, I think, that, I think that's another obvious one. That's and, and like once my time, I'm in Hollywood's getting all the attention, but I think Ford and Ferrari is really going to sneak up and surprise some people just because a lot of people don't have mm -hmm. it on their radar. I'm very yep. excited for that. Uh, similarly, I'm interested to see, obviously, it needs to do critically well, but Ad Astra, the science fiction movie where uh, Brad Pitt goes to Neptune to find his dad who never returned, Tommy Lee Jones. Directed by oh, yeah. James Gray, who did oh, the, yeah. the Lost The Lost City of Z. So I think if that movie's good, and I'm I'm very, very much anticipating that it comes out in the middle of the summer. Um, that's in the convo. Uh, then there's movies that like you have to at least think about them because they're direct they're made by previously recognized directors. I mean, where do you go Bernadette is a Richard Linklater movie, so maybe we'll see. Um, mm -hmm. Gemini Man with Will Smith, that's Ang yep. Lee. Who's one best director? So, yeah, you can't can't forget about those. Um, you got the gold on the sci-fi. 
Yep, the Goldfinch, obviously. John Crowley, who did Brooklyn, didn't. I don't think he won for that, but he's nominated. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Soderbergh comes back again. Yep. We just had High Flying Bird he comes back again with the Laundromat, the Panama Papers movie, which is a little higher profile. I mean, we all love Andre Holland and Zazie Beats, but this one has Gary Oldman, Meryl Streep, and Antonio mm-hmm. Banderas. And that's probably Netflix's other big one after Irishman. Yep. So that's going to be yeah, cool. Well, one we haven't mentioned yet, which I think is uh, <laughs> incredibly Oscar baby, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. So you got yep. Tom Hanks uh, portraying Fred Rogers, Mr. Rogers. You got Matthew Reese from The Americans, our guy, playing a um, uh, journalist named Lloyd Vogel. And it's about their relationship. But it's uh, directed by Marielle Heller, who directed Can You Ever Forgive Me? Which people, I think, uh, right leading up to the Oscars were a little frustrated that that didn't get more love. And I think that this could be kind of a makeup for her. As long as this movie is everything people are expecting it to be i could see her i could see her getting at least discussed as a possible director nom um and certainly the movie and probably hanks as well just because tom hanks gets nominated every time he he does something at this point so uh that that one seems like a pretty good bet um one that i'm really interested by and i want to hear what your thoughts are on it this movie jojo rabbit which I I just learned about reading up on the potential uh, movies that, you know, for 2020 that or 2020 Oscars. Uh, so this, this kid who's living in Nazi Germany back during World War II uh, finds out that his mother, who's played by Scarlett Johansson, um, is secretly shel- sheltering a Jewish boy. <laughs> and he has this imaginary friend who's an ethnically inaccurate version of Adolf Hitler, played by Taika Waititi uh, and also directed by Taika Waititi. It sounds uh, at the same time hysterical and confunding, and I'm here for it. And I would love to see that get an Oscar nom. Um, but man, I don't know what to make of that. Yeah, kind of thinks, kind of feels like it's a amalgamation of Death of Stalin and like Sorry to Bother You or something, you know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, probably doesn't get 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 to the finish line in terms of awards conversation, but may, maybe some critics list if it turns out good. Um, on that same note, I'm really excited for High Life, Claire Denis' uh, first English yeah. film. A24 picked it up. It's Robert Pattinson and Andre 3000 in space. <laughs> first trailer sold me 30 times over. Very excited for that. I think Claire Denis, she's very old. She's a French act, uh, director. Maybe there could be a push to recognize her. I mean, we just had last year two foreign language directors nominated, Powell and Quaron, of course. So Maybe that happens if High Life really takes off. Maybe it's A24's version of First Reformed this year. You know, yep. possible. Uh, Gloria Bell, it's directed by the guy who did A Fantastic Woman, which won Best Foreign Language Film two years ago. Coming out this, this Friday. Is a, yeah, and that's a, like a, a English Americanized version of a movie he made as Julian Moore in it. So again, another one potential you could see get something. Um, A24 has a bunch of other movies: The Souvenir, The Farewell, movies they just picked up recently. Um, they're always good, you know, good bet to have high quality films. I think Tilda Swinton's in one of those. So, you know, obviously possible that something catches on like that. Um, I didn't see this on any list that I, I, I was checking to make sure I wasn't forgetting anything, but I'm very curious to see how Uncut Gems does. This is the Safety Brothers follow up movie to Good Time coming out sometime at the end of the year, assumingly. So I know Good Time got a ton of attention from the critics. So maybe their follow-up gets a little more recognition, possible. Did you mention The Woman in the Window? I did not. I think that's a fascinating film because everything I know about the uh, the guy who made the book it's based off of is uh, interesting. Apparently the book's also bad, which is funny because this directly conflicts with the fact that it's directed by Joe Wright. The yeah. book was adapted by Tracy Letts. And in the movie, we have who uh, Brian Tyree Henry... Gary Amy Oldman, Adams, Amy Julianne Adams. Moore, yeah, stack cast, like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the that one, you know, uh, gonna be either really, really good or a major flop, and it feels like there's really no in between for it. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of good movies coming out. The The Good Liar, uh, Billy Condon, you got Ian McKellen and Helen Mirren uh, yep. in that one. Um, there's a lot of good movies coming out. And I, I mean, I think you, the ones we mentioned at the top are probably the best bets to get in there. Uh, but 
I have a feeling we're going to probably be talking about movies that we don't even know of right now. <laughs> we'll be in this race. Yeah, one that I, I definitely think it could be there at the end. I don't even know if the title has an official title yet, but it's the Roger Ailes movie. Um, mm. The, the, the yeah. comps are obvious with Vice, but yeah. this one isn't directed by someone as big or has this stature of Adam McKay. It's directed by Jay Roach, so I don't know if it'll quite get there. But then again, Ailes is played by Lithgow. Megan Kelly's played by Charlize Theron. Uh, Nicole Kidman's in here. Margot Robbie's in here. Allison Janney's in here. Connie Britton's in here. <laughs> feel like Vice again. Now Vice yeah. obviously didn't do as well as it wanted to, but it was still nominated for Best Picture and a bunch of other stuff. So mm-hmm. I think that's possible as well. Uh, absolutely. And uh, if that Chalamet uh, one with uh, Pattinson. Uh, oh, uh, out, the Henry the Fifth movie. Yeah, the, the King. The King. The King. Yeah. If that one comes out, that will obviously be in the discussion. Uh, too many good movies coming out right now, which is why uh it's not it's okay that some of them come out on streaming services so other people can see them uh yep. shout out to <laughs> spielberg um any last movies you want to get in before we wrap up uh for me no I, th- I think i think we nailed it i mean the best of enemies comes out soon taraji and rockwell again it's tough to bank on anything coming out this early in the year being around a year from now when award season happens but I really think April, middle March with us and then on to April, we're really starting to see a lot of stuff, especially as the Sundance movies start picking their, uh, you know, their, their times. Uh, Under the Silver Lake with Garfield comes out in uh, April, Andrew Garfield. Yep. Uh, we don't know if that's actually, actually any good, but it's definitely an artsy movie. So, mm-hmm. you know, plenty of stuff to consider. Absolutely. And we'll be talking about all of it. So hit that subscribe button. Uh, 